Hello, hello, beautiful people. Welcome to episode number two of our group Iron Man series. And if you missed the first episode, I made a playlist and I'll leave it in the description. Check it out. Also, if you're interested about my team, all about them will be in the description as well. In the last episode, we finally made it towards Winter Todd. And in today's episode, we are looking to obtain enough magic logs for all of our group members to finish Desert Treasure. We are not staying here until 99 fire making. All we want are those logs. So with that being said, let's start stacking some crates. We have already completed 50 winter tods, we're up to 70 fire making, I'm keeping these updates to as low as possible, to keep it as interesting as possible, and we're just gonna do a big opening once we reach, I think it is 80 fire making, that allows us to obtain those magic logs. Good morning everyone, we actually got our very first maze random event, and after this random, I'm also going to be opening all the chests I got up until 80 fire making, I just decided to do a little bit of fishing over night as well because I didn't feel like recording the opening just yet but with that being said let's begin with our very first maze I have not done this in years so honestly I've got no idea what I need to do there we go 77% I think that's pretty decent 76% drop down right in the end let's check the rewards this could be really good or really bad and we got some coal some nature rune and mithril lore. I swear you used to get so much more than this well either way that's what we got nothing insane but we'll take it all right then it is time to do what every early Iron Man loves to do and that is to open a ton of supply crates and the idea is we ended up getting all the way to 80 fire making so we have that small chance of getting magic logs we need to get 48 of them for all of us to complete desert treasure down the line and I believe Dieter already got 18 of them so that being said let's hopefully get lucky Thanks to your support on my videos, today's episode is brought to you by the Ridge Wallet. The Ridge Wallet is slim and lightweight wallet that is not bulky like an old-fashioned wallet. It is designed to easily fit in your front pocket and it can hold up to 12 cards including cash. Here is a very quick comparison between my old wallet and the Ridge Wallet and as you can see there is a massive difference between the two. I personally find it super convenient to grab Ridge Wallet anytime I go to the gym, the store, whatever it is, I just toss my gym card in their credit card ID and I'm good to go. There are over 30 colors and styles to choose from and my favorite one is the half dome. But I kind of do like the look of all of them. Another one I really like would be the carbon fiber. Ridge will also keep you protected from a digital pickpockets as each wallet has integrated RFID blocking technology. And not only that, Ridge also offers a lifetime warranty as they are using such a durable material. Especially with the holiday season coming up, I do believe Ridge would be an amazing gift for a brother, sister, maybe mom, maybe a good friend of yours. So you can get 10% off today by going to ridge.com slash MikaRS. That is ridge.com slash MikaRS and please use the code MikaRS. Thanks again to the Ridge for supporting the channel and let's continue on with the video. Also, I don't think I would mind any pyromancer pieces, but I'm just gonna go through this kind of quickly. Do I just like go really quickly? I guess so. 10k already there, some pages. That's a first collection log item as well, very cool. More pages. That's gonna take a little bit of time to open all of those, that's why I'm going quite fast. I'm gonna pay attention if I see any magic logs, I don't think we've gotten any so far. But we are getting decent amount of seeds, and I do believe the 92 is going to be responsible for a lot of farming that we do early game. Later on we're all gonna start doing it as well, but we just got a Bruma Torch, okay, that's pretty useless. And we also got Warm Gloves and another Bruma Torch, alright. And, ooh, that is huge! Tome of Fire is obtained on the account already. Wow, okay, we are kind of stacked. I need to let the boys know in a moment. Uh, but that is huge, actually. Tome of Fire obtained so early into the account. And now it's all about, like, yeah, we basically are chilling at this point. No magic logs yet, I don't think. And wow, that actually is amazing. So at this point, I'm pretty happy with the opening. O already, obviously, Pyromancer Garb on top of everything else. The third Bruma Torch. So now we cannot get any more Bruma Torches. I think that's how it works, anyways. I haven't really done done early game winter Todd in so long that uh yeah well in ever really i only did winter Todd on my maxed main account so doing it on 10 hp actually was really cool and quite quite nice actually pyromancer hood already obtained as well very cool we're missing now the legs and as many pages as we can get the better it's going to be because well now we have the tome so pages will be useful opening and no magic logs yet though so the magic logs are worrying me a little bit but because we got everything else
else I'm pretty darn happy so and there we go the pyromancer robe the gloves are we full no the boots is what we're missing and I guess if we get really lucky we could also obtain the dragon axe uh, but I don't think that will happen that's like really really rare another warm gloves we will be able to wait do I have any more crates chests is that it? Did I open everything? I think I opened everything. All right, there we go. Uh, did we get magic logs? We did not get magic logs, but we did get the Tome of Fire with a lot of burning pages. Like, this is insane. So, we're basically kind of stacked right now. All right, I like this. I don't think I'll be returning to Winter Todd right now. I'm gonna go ahead and complete some more quests, get the account rolling a little bit more. Looking at the loot from 80 fire making, it looks like we got approximately 2 million in straight up cash. And if you're interested, in the seeds this is the seeds that we got so honestly pretty good i'd say really wished we got those magic logs but you know what we can always return in the future for now let's continue on with quests and one thing i don't think i ever showed you guys is the group storage feature we have had a 92 work on a lot of money so agility pyramid revs he's been doing really scary stuff and we also have three rune scimitars a bunch of law runes and i'm just gonna toss in all these seeds because let's be honest i'm not looking forward to farming i don't know about the tome i think i can just drop it in here as well because I'm not going to be using it anytime soon. And when it comes to coin, I we already have enough here. So I'll just keep this to myself. So yeah, very cool. Now that we are done with Winter Todd for a little bit, we're going to go ahead and continue with our efficient questing. But first, as you can see, we only have three lives left. You may be wondering, hmm, I thought you guys started with four. And yes, that is the case. Unfortunately, Mr. 92, at the time of doing Agility Pyramid, forgot that his water skins ran out. And he ended up getting stacked for the Desert Heat damage plus the fall damage at the same time and we are now after one day left with three lives so uh yeah we'll see how this goes but you know what mistakes happen so let's try not to die ourselves it is now time for us to prepare for the future and do more quests so let's buy all these buckets and let's buy one, one this empty bucket pack and now we're gonna go up to fred's farm we're going to quickly kill a chicken as well to obtain its meat quickly pick up this egg and we quickly killed a cow calf as well Ca calf how do you say that the small cow uh, in order to obtain the meat here as well we got ourselves three buckets of milk from the dairy cow and now we're gonna make our way up all the way to the ice mountain in order to do the next step of the dwarf cannon quest which we were doing yesterday we quickly spoke to nulodion and he gave us the ammo mold and his notes and that is basically everything we need to complete this quest later on and now we shall return to varrock and continue on with gertrude's cat actually start off gertrude's cat we are now going to be starting basically every single quest there is in Varrock and also completing stuff like rune mystery parts where I have to deliver this package, any bark rolls that we need to do with this bark roll card, and obviously the bucket of milk and sardine is just used for the quest we're about to do. So once again, that is the important part of an early game Iron Man, being able to combine all of those different quests and try to merge them into one. So that's what we are doing right now, and let's see how quickly we can do all these quests. We have now started basically every quest in the vicinity, Gertrude's cat, Romeo and Juliet, Demon Slayer. I'm also gonna be buying this Staff of Fire. Now, if I wanted to, I could do Shield of Arav right now, but I'm not in the mood, so we're gonna skip that part. And we should also buy some quest items from the clove shop just south of the center. You are going to be buying leather gloves and pink skirt over here. And we're also quickly buying one rotten tomato. Very cool. Now, we're gonna continue on with our bar crawl card by sp simply going to the inn. And after that, we're also going to be buying four beers. We're gonna need those later on in the quests quick little trip to museum for some very nice early rewards in hunter and slayer 1000 experience in each we're up to nine level now very cool we are now finally delivering the package to Aubrey right after we stole a cup of tea and let him know that we have the package and then after that it is now time for us to buy honestly a bunch of runes that we'll be able to use without a fire staff so we're looking into buying about 100 fire runes about 300 earth runes and then about 4 thousand mind and eight thousand airs my inventory is a hot mess though so i'll quickly bank first now that we have enough runes we're gonna go ahead and cont uh, mugger don't 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 do that man don't do that now that we have the runes and everything we'll need to cast some good old spells let's go ahead and uh, continue on with the gertrude's cat quest don't mind me just getting drunk in every single pub in the game that's perfectly fine and now i can actually go ahead and finish gertrude's cat you can also cut this tree that's why we grabbed an axe in order to work towards your 
unlock tasks. And then here we're also going to be making a plank that's also going to do it. There it is. Okay, Gertrude's cat completed a little bit of cooking XP up to 12. And now we also got ourselves a kitten that we can start slowly growing and then eventually selling for a bunch of death runes. So we'll take it. Nice. We are now in a position where I'm just going to save spot these barbarians in order to reach 13 magic. I will be needing this later on to complete quests pretty much and it's just going to make everything a lot easier. We now moved our way a little bit north of Falador and we're going to be killing a black bear here in order to obtain its raw meat. As you maybe know, we will need that meat later on in the quest. I am once again getting wasted in a bar in Falador and after that I will very quickly buy five wizard mind bombs and I can do this just by speaking to them and ask them for a mind bomb. We are also able to buy some woad leaves from the wise and the gardener in the Falador park and we're gonna need eight of those in total. It is finally time to complete witch's house and not be scared about running around with 10 hit points. Let's go ahead and do it. All right so we are now at the part where we have to defeat the four bosses in order to reobtain the ball for the kid and here's how you can save spot them. You can attack the experiment and move right onto this tile. Once you do get hit you move one down and then if it get pushed up here to the north you're able to save spot it just like that you step down and you're good to save spot it. You can do this with first two bosses and after that your save spot will be down here on the south. And once you're at the third form you simply run to this spot and you are good to complete the quest and actually feel a bit safer when you are no longer 10 hit points. And now that we have killed every single boss we're gonna grab the ball and the quest can be completed as long as I don't get caught right now. That would be bad but come on now. There we go, moving on from 11 to 24 hit points, it is definitely going to feel much better now, knowing that I can't get like one hit by things, that's really cool. And now, since we are right over here, let's go on and do the druidic ritual as well. We are now allowed to train Herbler on the account, druidic ritual completed, we got from 1 to 3 herb. I guess now it's time to continue on with more quests. At the moment we have 17 quest points, I'm trying to reach a stage where I can AFK combat stats on the account as fast as possible. Quickly done the witch's potion as well and now we're moving on to 13 magic which is perfect meaning we can now use fire strike this is going to be the most useful spell for a lot of quest bosses that are safe spotable and my kitten is looking to be hungry in five minutes i should probably fix that and that is the night sword finally complete as well for a lot of smithing experience all the way from 1 to 29 that is one of the best quests to do early really like if you were to train smithing slowly it would take you a very long time I I think the next thing I want to complete is Tori's Trap, so let's go ahead and home teleport and start working on that. So we're now in the middle of the Tori's Trap and I want to show you guys a cool little trick you can do in order to save spot him. So he's now going to attack you, you speak to a different captain, but you don't go through the entire conversation, you basically just do it like that and you like corner spot him and now he's gonna be safe spotted forever and the reason for it is this extra job it's literally the same thing as witch's house and then you can just save spot it down kill him that way questing with no stamina's and one agility is very very slow and that's also one of the reasons why we are now finishing this quest so what that is going to create is it will give us some xp lamps and now we can use those to pretty much get free agility experience 4.6k from 1 to 20 agility and now if i do it again from 20 to 26 agility so we once again use quests in order to skip the very slow early game leveling so very cool it is now time to once again use the minigame teleport to teleport to the fishing trawler we're very quickly going to be cooking some food that we got from winter Todd in order to achieve level 15 cooking there is level 15 cooking i'll cook the rest of this i don't think i need them for anything else i'm now finally in a position where i will actually do some quests that give me solid combat xp so for First of all, I'm gonna go ahead, kill a couple of imps, bury their ashes, and just get all four beads before I move on. I got mega lucky this time around. All four beads, no duplicates at all, and it only took me... Well, this won't show it. Uh, I guess this shows my lifetime kills of imps, but I, I don't think I killed like more than 10, to be honest. So yeah, it's finally time to do some quests that will actually give me nice XP. We're about to complete another quest. It's gonna give us a ton of attack experience from 1 to 29. Also a little bit of coins. And our thieving went, I think, 
from like 25 to 27. Oh yeah, never mind. That's not a lot of thieving XP. But that's very cool. Our combat level is now 16. And let's keep questing. All right, we killed the boss and now let's finish the quest. There we go. And we're once again receiving very nice rewards for completing this quest. We are now up to 11, well, up to 35 attack. We want to get up to 40 with waterfall completion. So we can use our rune scimitar that's currently in the group storage and then just AFK trained up if I have to do something else in real life. So uh, decent amulet gives you some defense stats. We can wear that for now and uh, let's continue. I feel like on an early game Iron Man, what I do these days is just give a lot of tips. So first one, when you're going in and you need to bank slash drop all your items, right? Just climb up the ladder here, drop your items here. So if someone comes by, they don't steal your shit. You know, you don't want to be losing your, your items. And then the second tip is once you do get teleported in the tomb, right? Instead of just tanking a mosh giant because it can hit you a 14, you come right here, you hit this zombie and you wait till zombie hits you just like that. Then you eat so you're full HP and guess what? Most giant is not going to damage you so you grab this and we're gonna do it again we're gonna hit a zombie wait for a hit like that and then we're gonna sprint and once again most giant cannot hit us and now we're gonna go here like this is where we could actually take damage but once again if i can hit a skeleton it's gonna hit me back just like so i can run right through it most giant does nothing we grab that he's gonna hit me again most giant does nothing and just like that we've gone and did it right and then here it max it is 14 so i don't really care i'm just gonna sprint right through it and if you did it fast enough you can grab your runes and everything um just from where you left them which for me is just a little bit here and going up the ladder so small little tip there how you can basically complete waterfall without too many problems and at the very end of the quest make sure you're using gladiol's urn on the chalice and just like that we're gonna be getting some fat combat experience look at it beautiful we're now 40 attack and 30 strength meaning we can straight up use our rune scimitar which is awesome nothing drops to the floor our combat level is 29 and we are moving up in the world very cool i quickly yoinked a a scimitar from the group storage i'm gonna let the boys have this if they need it for anything i don't really know i think i'll need one of these for monkey madness but i'm just dropping it there for now i do really like the group feature well the way i use it right now i kind of just dump shit and i don't need it there and let them deal with it so uh yeah i don't mind it but it's kind of nice it's funny because i'm now starting the grand three quest i went a little bit off the actual guide part i just want to get my combat levels quite high here to be able to afk when i need to and it's just deadman mode all over again with very very low XP rates and I kind of like it man this is it, it, it's so relaxing because I never need to worry about where a PKer could be what they could do I'm just chilling nothing can kill me and I'm gonna regret saying that our cat is finally grown we'll need this later or we can toss her in for 200 death runes. we should be starting to grow multiple of these but for now uh, I'm just not gonna bother I'll bother about that when like in the future for now let's finish off the grand tree quest all right we got another dangerous encounter ahead of us but if you know a nice little trick if you step one step north you should be able to instantly save spot the demon here so let's see if this still works if not you can always run into the rocks if you're slow but you basically want to be just slightly north of the stairs yeah you see this so you move right here make sure you don't accidentally misclick on a rat make sure your spells are on and you should be good to go it's a really nice safe spot for the black demon and that's a dead demon All right let's go ahead finish the quest every single time i get the rock on a very last route i don't know my luck and this place is not very good but um after this conversation we will be done with yet another quest so i have a few options right now that i can do i can follow the efficient guide i can look into completing dragon slayer or i can go afk and get my stats afk for a little bit which is i think the option that i will choose however 18k attack xp a little bit of agility xp as well 8000 and a little bit of magic xp so that is all looking very nice the stats are on the screen right now what i think i will do right here is is I will grab my rune scimitar. Maybe I'll do like the quest so I can uh, use a very AFK sand crab spot as well. But the idea is I'll get my defense up to like 20, throw on full mithril armor and just AFK for a little bit before I am in the mood to keep on questing. So this is pretty much going to be my sweet spot for when I just want to chill and I don't want to grind quests. I'm just going to be AFKing a lot of my time on sand crabs. I'm first going to push for 20 defense so I can wear mithril just so I'm a little bit tankier and I can't really die. 
high. I know I could do quests for it, but honestly, it shouldn't take too long to just get 20, like, brute forcing it like I am right now. And then once I feel like it, like in a couple of hours after I finish my lunch, I'm gonna go ahead and continue with more quests. Alright, it appears that Vios is going crazy and we get two XP lambs that we are now going to use either on agility or herb. Since herb is looking really rough, I think this is the play. But also maybe use it in prayer because yeah, that's gonna be a bit annoying to train. But let's just go herblor. Let's go standard. That's 500. Gets us to level 7 and that is a little bit more. It gets us all the way to level 10. Now, if I use the current favor certificate, I want to be using that in piss Aurelius. This is actually really important. You don't fuck it up. So I'm just literally double checking. Yeah, piss Aurelius is what I need. And there we go. Now we have 20% favor, uh, which is perfect. And I'm going back to AFKing. I pretty much spent an entire day AFKing and uh, these are the stats by the end of it. Uh, we are 44 attack, 55 strength and 30 defense. Obviously a ton more questing and preparations to come in the future days. But today I decided to just chill, train some stats and, uh, you know, have some fun. Increase my hit points level by a little bit. So I feel safer when I run around the game. We're also 51 combat right now, which is, you know, pretty solid. And uh, the gear is still looking very questionable. We will be increasing that in the next few days. But right now I'm just unlocking my next AFKing spot, which is going to be a lot faster. But for that, I will need 5% in Hasidias by simply pushing these plows and spending way too much time here. Uh, by the time I reach 5%, I then create an opportunity to get to 20% much faster. Put some salt into some compost and hopefully this is the person I have to speak to in order to... Yep, there you go. 26% Hasidias. I will finish 40 in the future, but now I have all the requirements in order to complete the Depths of Despair. So I'm gonna go ahead and complete that very quickly. I should hopefully be able to kill this snake without any problems with my stats and after that the quest is done. My AFK spot is updated and at that point it's all about doing more quests when I feel like it pretty much. But yeah, this snake seems pretty easy. Enough AFKing before I accidentally max the account uh, with the rune scimitar. We are up to 62, almost 63 strength already and now I do think it's time for me to go ahead and knock out some quests in order to progress my account and get closer to the dragon scimitar. Obviously I'm still one prayer so I'll only be going for a DC me once I do have that on 43 but that's all for the future and it's actually not that inefficient to just have an account AFKing the stats up because our goal is to PVM long term anyways so getting these stats up even though it takes forever is a pretty solid option but yeah right now I do think it's time let's get a shit ton of questing done and there it is the depths of despair is completed a little bit of agility XP some coins but most importantly we have a new memoir page and we also got this whatever that is can I just add this to the I don't have the book with me but if I quickly read the Hasidius favor certificate this will give me a free 10% we'll take it and now let's find my book so I can put this in and then move on with more quests also I did end up getting the casket and this little lamp we're gonna chuck it on her blur I was hard considering actually just lamping my prayer to be honest but I should just afk some blue dragons get some bones and train that in the wilderness so that's gonna be a lot of fun and we have now completed the hazil cult for 1.5k thieving xp and once again a couple of coins we got to 28 thieving thanks to that and that is a dwarf cannon quest done for a little bit of crafting xp but most importantly an ability to use the dwarf multi cannon we're up to 35 right now let's keep at it that is cook's assistant completed we can now start a recipe for disaster cutscene if you remember all the items we bought very early on into the account it was all to lead up to the moment where we can now mix a cocktail and create a fruit blast if we do add those ashes onto it it should create a dirty blast or maybe not yet Okay, so maybe I need to talk to him and then create a dirty blast or whatever the fuck that is. Now we're adding the ashes to the fruit blast and we speak to him again and that'll pretty much do it. There it is. You have assisted the Lumbridge cook again. One quest point, but most importantly, we can now start the recipe of disaster cutscene, which takes a little bit of time, but it will eventually lead to us getting Barrow's gloves. Beautiful. The cutscene is over. It takes way too long time, but now in the future we can work on completing the gloves. Uh, but for now, let's go ahead and finally utilize the chest that we unlocked thanks to that and we can also buy some stuff that we need right here if I go buy food for example I can buy some buckets of milk I'll hop a couple of worlds I need seven of those and that will be sheep shearer completed for 150 crafting and 60 coins now since we are already here we're gonna go to the ham hideout and look to get a rusty sword we will be needing that to complete an Ardun diary a little bit later I don't have much food so hopefully that's enough to get it we are starting on 28 thieving so as you're going for the sword if you get 
get any opals or polish buttons or any hand pieces you keep them you'll use those later everything else you can pretty much drop so we already got lucky with those we'll need that for the quest we'll need that for the quest and now it's all about just getting the rusty sword but they keep kicking me out so it do be what it do be all right i finally got a rusty sword now we can move on here's another tip of the day when you're creating your dice you can just use your items on it and she will make them instantly making things a lot easier than to do it through her conversations basically so we are making four red dice four blue dice right now five yellow dice and that should be everything we need i believe it is situations like these i'm very happy i follow a guide so to say because i have all of the items that i need for the continuation of the quest right here available to use and trust me if i didn't follow a guide i would not have all these items here so that's very cool whilst i'm in the middle of questing for the prince ali rescue we quickly do a lap of the agility course so we also get the diary steps out of the way i'm very very satisfied with the fact that i have all these quest items basically already in the bank because i prepare for those on the episode number one i believe and it just makes things so much easier so i can just go to a place complete a bunch of quest steps go to another place and repeat the whole process so i'm actually enjoying this whole early game questing thing but at the same time i can't wait to get out of it so we can start some good old pvming but there's a lab for the diary and let's continue on questing remember all the beads we got whilst we were in the ardone well we can now quickly complete the what is this even called imp catcher i believe it is and just like that we now have an amulet of accuracy yeah, that's actually my best amulet for a while now till we get like a strength enemy for example and whilst we're here we're also going to complete a bunch of other quests the first one is rune mysteries for which we need those notes from well the first episode pretty much so we're going to do that here and then also at the same time we're also going to complete restless ghost so a lot of steps on the same location which just makes things so much easier so that is rune mysteries completed and now if i make my way a little bit south here i should be able to grab the skull from this altar and that's gonna then be restless ghost completed once we make our way to lumbridge and you can just run away from this skeleton if you're a lower level he should never be able to hit you and that's gonna be some nice parade experience whilst we're here we can also quickly teleport to the mines because well that's a diary task and then get right out but also whilst we're here we are going to be killing some wizards in order to get bones and we're gonna get the third key for the demon slayer at the same time and we finally gave him 25 bones for the silver light key i can now teleport to the chronicle and pretty much look to complete the demon slayer and everything else there is to do in varrock and that is romeo and juliet completed and while we're in varrock and we have three keys let's also go ahead and complete the demon slayer and there we go three quest points and silver light obtained from the demon slayer completion as well nice and here it is the murder mystery is now also completed a little bit of crafting xp a little bit of coins prerequisite for piety and we are up to 15 crafting solid now we're gonna move on with fishing contest and that is now the fishing contest completed as well for a little bit of fishing xp and most importantly access to the mountain which is a prerequisite for obviously some of the quests later on down the line very cool now that we are entering the falador area we're gonna complete a lot of quests because we've already pre-done all the other steps first one on the list doric's quest and he is surprised we already have all the resources so there it is the quest is done a little bit of mining xp and some coins very cool now we're gonna move on and finish the pirate treasure and there it is the pirate treasure is now completed we're gonna now move on and do black knight's fortress let's open the casket for some loot ring and an emerald and that is the black knight fortress and since we are already here we might as well do the recruitment drive as well a thousand prayer herblore and agility xp for completing the recruitment drive and also we can now wear initiate that's gonna give us a couple of levels level 9 prayer very cool and level 14 herblore nice and that is observatory finished for more crafting xp and i'm not actually sure what i got i think it was sapphire yeah uh, sapphire as an extra reward very cool up to 20 crafting without ever training it we can now create sapphire rings and technically recoils i believe it is time to finish the restless ghost right now so let's just home teleport and do that very quickly and there it is a thousand free prayer experience get us all the way to level 14 prayer very cool and another quest is done so i'm gonna attempt to start the lost tribe right now and then move my way over to vera and we ended up getting from one to nine rune crafting by simply completing the enter the abyss mini quest i thought there would be a pop-up but well there isn't one thanks for the xp though and now we are going to continue with the biohazard quest and here it is the biohazard is now completed i didn't have items to do the dig site so i skipped it and we got a bit of thieving xp but also we can now complete all the ardun easy diaries which is one of my goals for the ending of this 
this video, I want to make sure I unlock that RD cape. So I have basically a really good teleport option when I want to visit Ardon. But that was level 30 thieving. And now let's go ahead and teleport ourselves to wilderness and hopefully not die. All right. Well, if I die here, it do be what it do be. But it is my task. So I have to do it. Let's see. Bro, I swear I'm about to die right now. Nice. All right. Well, yeah, we're chilling. All right. And with this fishing trip, I do believe I completed every single task for the easy diaries, which was my goal for this episode. Spent a ton of time questing, a ton of time AFKing. I'm currently just doing my best to balance the two, you know, get those stats and get those quests completed. And yeah, as you can see, this is basically fully done. Uh, let's just go ahead and get ourselves that cape and the XP lamp. Let's pick to two pints and we are going to get ourselves a very useful cloak that we will be using pretty much an entire time. There it is. Looks a bit scuffed. I'm used to the fourth version of it, but still it's going to give us some stats. I guess we are receiving just a little bit of step bonus and a little bit of a prayer bonus. So this is how we're looking right now. We look a little funky. We look, we look a little funny as well, but this antique lamp, I'm holding it until I can use it on prayer. I should be able to get this with the future quests. Now, this is where I'm going to be ending the second episode. I really do hope you guys did enjoy. If you missed the first episode, please go ahead and check it out. I will be leaving the link in the description for the playlist. Also, feel free to check my teammates. All of that will be in the description as well. And we finished today's episode as a rank 632 out of all the four man groups. And our combined total level at the moment of ending this video is 2762. I'll be seeing you guys again very soon with another video with episode number three. And until then, stay safe and bye bye.